All right, back here for game five. I'm on the play. Hands great. I'll keep. Yeah, my hand's also great. Go. It might not look it to the untrained eye, but it is. Does it have Elvish Vision right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Go. Ooh. Okay, I will play a fortified village and reveal planes, and I will attack for one. 19. I think I'm just going to crack this clue here. You can go. You just can't resist drawing a card, folks. Just go. Okay. Now we got some stuff. Attack for one. 18. Lamholt Pacifist. Where's Wolves? The Raven Inspector. Oh, man. Look at that. Clued up. All right. Pass a turn. Charge this. Play Shivan Reef. Archive. Contort this. Go. That was, that was a good turn from you. Yep. Okay. So you have access to eight mana next turn with an untapped land. That's a lot. Yep. I think I'm going to do this this turn and then these on the next turn. So I'll play a fortified village, real little forest. And where's your blue mana, Ross? I don't know. I thought drawing an extra card would basically ensure that I have blue mana. Yeah, it just fix your mana every time you draw an extra card. <laughs> yeah. So I can I can Coco now, and that's a lot worse against a Chandra. If I pass, it's a lot worse against Clash of Wills. If I just got this clashed, I'm basically dead. So, and he only has a couple Chandras, so I'll just main phase it. Mm -hmm. Also has a negate. Jesus. Oh yeah. <laughs> Attack for two. Yep. At sixteen. Use your two Elvish Visionaries. How could you, you possibly go. lose? I mean, I'm still going to win this game. <sighs> Big draw there. You're just going to have five cards Big in here that do there. nothing. All right. I think we'll start our turn off with a little anticipate. Ugh. Mm. Brutal. Is he slow rolling me? Is he just going to flip over the K return? No, I have nothing. <laughs> well, that's not true, but <laughs> I have things. <laughs> um, Important things. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana next turn, so pretty well set up and ready to go. I guess I'll just play this and pass. Uh, ten mana is a lot. It's more than I'm prepared for him having. Uh, so I need to prepare to get Ulmog next turn. Nah. It doesn't even need a land to do it, so... Uh, I do need a land to do it. No, you just add a counter to this. Yeah, three, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I can't count. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that just means I want to extend my board as much as possible. If he could have swept my board last turn with a Chandra or K return, he, he would have. So I'll play another Tireless Tracker. I'll clash it for... Two. Okay. Uh, play a land and investigate. Yep. I'll play a Thalia's Lieutenant, which now insulates me against K return, and attack for eight. Yep. Brings you to eight. Yep. And I'll pass the turn. Um. Exile your... I suppose just the inspector and the tracker. Your turn. Exiled. Hmm. Okay. We're still not out of it because Michael's at eight. Awkward. We'll invest. Sack this clue. Yep. Hmm. 
How many blue cards are in your hand? No comment. <laughs> so I'm at three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen, sixteen. So I, I have enough cards in my deck to survive two Ulamog triggers. That'll bring me down to six cards. And then a couple draw steps will still leave me. And uh, But I do need to end this game quickly, so I'll just play my things, get two counters on this lieutenant. Yep. And not really worth attacking. Just trying to build a big board. Hope Michael doesn't have much left. Um... Let's see. I think the f you have one card left. Yeah. I think the fact that we don't have much left means we probably actually need to start attacking. Uh, this will buy us a turn, and then if Ross goes down to ten, then he has to hold back one blocker next turn, so we'll attack and trigger. Oh, I almost pulled off exactly twenty. Probably 21. Uh, I'm going to take the 10. Mm -hmm. I go to 10. Go. Spawning bed. <laughs> you boarded one of those out. I know. That is not fair. This is only for playing color spells? Correct. Oh, no. Yeah, it, you, I can't activate it with this. Yeah. yeah. So you're at 2, 4, 5, 6 to activate. So you can't activate spawning bed and, fumer and activate a fumeral. Uh, this these flip, and the question is, do I want to activate recruiter with the trigger in the stack? And I don't think I do. I'd rather just try to accompany, and I have a clue to sacrifice. So, draw for turn, and how many companies do I have left in my deck? Two still. That's that's a good number. Um, I guess there is a question as to whether I want to take a card out of my deck because of Ulamog. I'm at 45 now, I go down to 44, he tacks me down to 4 cards, and then, yeah, it basically doesn't matter at that point. And maybe an island will matter, if I have one. I mean, just check, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I'm still going to take a land out anyway. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, your island's gone. Yeah, my island is gone. Jerk. <laughs> Three cards? Two. Two. And I'll suck this clue. Yep. <laughs> what? That is not a not a card I anticipated, uh <laughs> off that draw. Well, Yes, I'll play it. Okay. I need, yeah, from my my look earlier, I don't think I have a forest left, so. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, I could have had a land drop to flip it anyway, which would have been good. It would have been a 4-4 four, four instead of a 2-2 two, two and possibly something else next turn. And now... So, if Michael has absolutely nothing... The best attack I can make is with these three, or the, with all four. Uh, Michael just blocks these three after making tokens with spawning bed. And then you can only activate one fumeral next turn. So you take two here and then block here. And this is already eight after I jump. But say Michael has one removal spell. Then I'd have to attack with just these three. He blocks them all, stays at eight. I chump with Nissa and attack with these. He kills this after making a fear roll, and I'm just dead to it anyway. So I real I just can't beat a removal spell. So don't bother trying. Alright. Um You just have the one card left. Yep. I think we're just gonna get three. Um, I don't think there's 
a reason to block with the third one yet, so I'm just going to block your two biggest creatures, and I'll float two mana, sacrificing them. Okay. And then I'll sacrifice Sac this, yep. your Narcove. So you take five. Yep. Brings you to three. Yep. Pass the turn. How do you just have nothing? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to hold back everything, go to one. Or no, you're three. Yeah, so you're I'm just at, dead. I'm at three. If you have literal nothing, you're dead. I mean I have a hedron archive, but <laughs> <laughs> You don't and you don't but you don't have seven I guess you, you I assume you have a land. Yeah, yeah. So I can go this archive. I guess I want to leave up a colorless source. Yeah. So draw two. Okay, return or conversion. Yep. yep. Okay. Toward this attack. Yep. <laughs> All right, back here for the conclusion of Blue Red Eldrazi Control versus Bant Humans. Um, Ross took down the series 3 2, but probably should have been 4 1, actually. I uh, realized a couple turns after the game, or a few minutes after the game, I guess I should say. Yeah. Uh, that I did cast my Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger with nine mana. For some reason, I thought I could cast Somehow my, I'm not surprised. Could kick the, <laughs> Thought I could cast uh, Ulamog with my Triumph for Second Gods, but I only was going to six lands on the battlefield that turn. Yeah, I thought so, the same thing. I knew you had to make a, a mana with Majoring Network. Right. And then when you play a, t a land that's, I sort of have my head as a two mana land. I was like, oh, that's cute. You got to Clash and still plays Ulamog. And by cute, I mean, oh, crap, you played Ulamog. But... <laughs> Uh, so in reality, I would have had to charge up my Majoring Network to three counters and then cast Ulamog that turn, um, which means that Ross probably would have just killed me uh, a couple turns later because he got to expand his board really wide that turn, uh, additional tireless tracker on the battlefield. But um, anyways, as far as the matchup itself, um, I felt that for the most part, if I was on the draw and I was unable to get value out of my Clash of Wills or other counter spells or be able to play on curve at all, uh, I was a pretty big dog in the yeah. matchup. Get, getting value out of Clash was super important, and if you didn't get it on turn two, it was pretty difficult to get value later on in the game. So being able to Clash on two then freed you up to be able to play your two-mana spells later in the game, uh, so you got to double spell more often, maybe play Hedron Archive or, into... Or Spell plus Charge, that was really Yeah, important. or Spell plus Charge, exactly. Uh, maybe Hedron Archive into Spatial Contortion or Roast plus Charge, things like that, and that just gave you that extra mana that you would need later in the game to land your big creatures, and uh, Dryner and Hope and Ulamog are both obviously great at stabilizing the board yep. and giving you control of the game. So uh, the, the, the sooner you can get those down onto a reasonably stable board, the better... Uh, um, as far as my deck itself, uh, I think probably the best card in those sets of games was Majoring Network. It let me uh, cast things ahead of curve, uh, yeah. specifically like Drowner on 5, um, being able to cast Ulamog ahead of schedule, even just being able to... Like, there was the, the, the game that I just died when I cast, like, Adjacent Raveler of Secrets and just had nothing in my hand, but the fact that Majoring Network could give me a possible sequence of outs because I'm able to just get a bunch of additional mana that turn even though I don't have any action, like maybe I can start to chain action off my Jace or something along those lines. Um, so I think those kinds of effects are really powerful in control decks. Uh, I, I alluded it to a, during the videos, but during Time Spiral Block, a huge part of the control deck uh, strength was playing various stretch of briefs and molten yeah. slack heaps, which are, are too good to print now. Yeah, those those charge lines are very good, and when they when they spoiled Majoring Network, I thought it was a card that was going to see a decent amount of play. And uh, the way the mana has worked in standards, charging up colorless mana hasn't really been uh, very viable, and we haven't really seen big mana late game control decks. But it, it fits very nicely into this deck, and it's no surprise to me that it is among uh, the best cards in the deck, if not the very best. Yeah, because it's uh, a very powerful effect. Big, big issue with the ramp decks is that they're playing green, they're playing explosive vegetations, Mrs. Pilgrimage, so. You're not, you know, taking your turn off to charge your majoring network because you're just actually putting lands on the battlefield. And yeah. when you're putting lands on the battlefield, trying to forsaken gods gets much better, obviously. So uh, that's kind of like the the difference between this deck and the ramp deck. It's more controlling, has more interaction. Uh, trying to play Drago, charge up smart majoring network, and as a result, its shrines aren't as good because you're not actually putting additional lands on the battlefield. But um, I like a lot of the elements of what this deck is doing. I think it's really interesting. I know that Adrian Sullivan wrote a select article talking about a mono blue version. Uh, there was definitely a couple games where I had some shaky mana. There's not that many red sources in the deck. Yeah, and you're so. playing a double red card in Chandra, so yeah, uh, and, and that burned you on game 
I think the, the mono blue version also gets access to engulf the shores, which yes. is a very good uh, sort of wrath effect because you, you, you don't really care about getting straight card advantage in most games. As long as you can buy enough time to start playing your big spells, th those spells will be power powerful enough to take over the game by the uh, against a, even a, a pretty full hand from your opponent. So engulf the shores is, is very close in effectiveness to a wrath of God in that deck and uh, definitely could change things if you had access to it. Yeah, anything that just lets you catch up on the battlefield, generate some tempo, uh, when you're just like, you, you can bleed away cards when you're just trying to buy time to actually just land Ulamog, which <laughs> is basically a four for one. I just made that up. But it's a game it for right one. In my head. You play it and you get one game for the, for <laughs> yes, that one yes. card. Uh, one, one of the games in the match yes, for one. Yes, it, sure. it is a game for one. Yeah, that's not bad, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. You only I mean. need to win two. <laughs> yeah. So you put two Ulamogs in your deck and then, <laughs> then you're, you're all set. <laughs> this is how magic works. Yeah, just be sure to cast the second one before <laughs> the first game ends and you're fine, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think this deck is cool. It's interesting. Um, lots of things I like about the deck, but maybe I would be interested in looking towards them on a blue version that Adrian wrote about. Um, I think that would fix a lot of the issues that I kind of perceived. Um, as far as your deck, uh, it, it looked, you know, just pretty fluid. You're, yeah. you're able to, for the most part, be aggressive, leverage the small human synergies. It's not like you had to make, like, a lot of concessions. It's just, the Always Lieutenant's a great card. You had to put Thraven Inspector in your deck. It's not really that big of a deal. You're already playing Dust Watcher, Crew, and Tireless Tracker, just like Band Company. Yeah, so the, uh, very few concessions at power level, and you get a lot of good synergy. And the cards you're missing out of the... Uh, normal uh, Bant Company deck or Jace and Bound and Crisis. And those cards are, are tough to cast because they're both blue. So you get to make your mana a little bit better and uh, you just get to, I, I think, curve out more efficiently and have a bit more of power from the synergies with Thalys Lieutenant. Yeah, I, I didn't get to do it, but I imagine casting Collective <laughs> Company into two Thalys Lieutenants is... Oh, it's it just got to be it the, is the, nice. the sweetest Oof. thing. I'm, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Yeah. So I, I definitely think that um, I... I think this is just the best version of, of Bant Company going forward because the human synergies are so okay. strong. And just making the mana better, we've all been sort of, uh, I hesitate to say disappointed by Jace in this format because it just doesn't flip nearly as often as it did when we had fetch lands. And there are there isn't a lot to do with it unless you get uh, already have drawn a collected company so you get to flash it back. So Jace underperforming in the deck uh, makes it a, a sort of easy cut in my opinion and you just get to play more of the humans Lame Hope Pacifist has proved itself very good in this format this matches up well in combat with basically everything for a fairly cheap body and Thalys Lieutenant gives you another way to make it a 4-4 by itself right. so it can satisfy its own uh, ability and just start attacking yeah when you have, along when with you have eight ways to turn it on and it's just actual 2 mana 4-4 four, four, it's you know absurdly yeah it's just Tarmogoyf yeah Basically. So, so we get to play Tarmogoyf, we get to play Glorious Anthem attached to a two mana 7-7. Seven, seven. That's Thios Lieutenant. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. That just never actually happens. Yeah, by it was the way. like a two mana 3-3, three, three, which is still good. <laughs> yeah, it's still good. Yeah, you get to play pretty close to Elvish Visionary. And then you get to play Duskwatch Recruiter, which is like a two mana draw seven. Pretty close, Tarbogoy. Pretty close, Elvish Visionary. <laughs> yeah, and then you get to play Duskwatch Recruiter, which is like a two mana draw seven. Yeah, that's just it's just Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, well, that's Wheel of Fortune. Ojai's Command is Cryptic Command. Collected Company is like Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> sure, it does everything. Um, but. It <laughs> 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 uh, this matchup kind of like showcase, showcase, excuse me, this this classic tension with control versus aggro control, and especially with like the werewolves and the various instants, uh, collected company, Ojitai's command, and then uh, it's even more pronounced post board when Ross has access to negate, uh, just able to get under me, make me play off balance, use my mana in inappropriate times, and then just kind of punish me with these interactive cards. Yeah. So it's usually able to like, get ahead and then. Uh... If, you're, if you didn't have the creature to stabilize, you had to play a Planeswalker and just negate it and win. And yep. sometimes I was far enough ahead that the, even the creature wasn't enough to catch up from from your position. So, uh, pretty, yeah, pretty classic. When the when the aggro deck gets to play at instant speed like the Collective Comedy decks do, it, it's very nice against counterspell heavy decks like this, which is why we haven't really seen them. And um, why I, I kind of feel the deck should move more towards being a ramp deck. Yeah, a little bit more proactive. Maybe, like, Clash of Wills is still fine, but yeah. maybe just... Uh, more of an effort to tap out most of the turns. Yeah, fewer void shatters, more other things. Yeah, more real cards. Maybe like warping whale, <laughs> especially if you're moving to uh, mono blue. But yeah, yeah. And Gulf the Shores does seem sweet. That's something I would be interested in playing with this deck for sure. Definitely. Okay. Um, but this weekend, taking a week off on the SG tour, but then on the following week we'll be in Atlanta for Standard with Andy Boswell and CVM the Beard. And the beard and the pocket square. 
Andy Boswell is yeah. too well dressed. Oh yeah, the pocket. Not, I, I like the pocket. It is square. so nice. It is not fair. I you it, could just make an effort to dress better, man. I mean, sh- sure. <laughs> I, no, but I, I don't want to wear a suit to a magic tournament. <laughs> sure, me, me too. And even, the thing is, even if I did, I would. Todd still Stevens look, would still look better than you. Todd Stevens and now Boswell. And it's, I would. It's I would brutal. I'm at best bronze, and no one wants to win the bronze. <laughs> no one remembers who won the bronze medal. <laughs> That's, who, who cares about bronze? It's shameful, really. Even if your suit game was on point, Todd Stevens was still a better shoes than you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's just not, and, and Boswell's got the pockets where I, I just can't be just covered on all bases, man. Yeah, so now maybe we it, we'll we'll probably see Todd Stevens there, and then they can have a, a competition. We'll get a catwalk going, and I don't know how we're not going to do. That. It'll be like Zoolander. We're just not going to do. We're that. definitely we're definitely going to set up a Zoolander type competition. One of them, uh, Boswell is Owen Wilson, and Todd Stevens is Ben Stiller, I guess. I don't know, man. I'm just going to let you run wild with this for the next 30 seconds before <laughs> I reel us back in, and it's time to go. <laughs> no, I'm, I, that, that's all I've got. Okay. Thank thank God. <laughs> so, <laughs> Atlanta, that's a thing. Standard. If you're in the area, join standard, us, yeah. play some Magic, or check us out on- played Standard in forever. A lot of modern. Yeah, we've been a lot of modern lately. A lot of modern. That that sort of happens. You move into this modern mode, and now we're back to standard. We've got a sweet standard format. You can come down to Atlanta. You can play. You can see everybody, talk to everybody, or you can watch the stream from home and uh, do that. Been a while since CBM and uh, Boswell been in the booth, so I'm sure they're excited to yeah shake off the rust. Boswell loves it. He's he. I'm sure he's he's been itching rare to go. Yep. Probably break out some. I know he, he might. Maybe he could race his game to another level. I don't even know. Here what what is the next thing else weird you're going to talk about? <laughs> I don't know what the next level is. It could be anything. He could have a hat. Imagine possible with like a like a really gentlemanly hat. Why would he have a hat? He has he has he, his hair looks good. Mm, but it like it, you could wear a hat and have it be really really classy with the suit. It could be like a 19th century gentleman. Anyways, come on. Hats hat, hats are fine. Atlanta standard. They haven't been Andy, in fashion for like CBM. 60 years, but Join us, watch us, <laughs> whatever. Just don't listen to Ross. <laughs> I, I got nothing. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>